Howdy, folks. Happy day after Thanksgiving. Welcome to Tiny Tent Show, episode number 35. Gratitude and good wishes from our families to yours. And here's to a time when we may gather up again to enjoy performances like the one in this episode. A vintage performance of Old Minnesota, Song of the North Star. A show written by Warren Nelson, backed by images curated and collected by Christine Enfer. In 2008, the show was named the official sesquicentennial touring show by the Minnesota Sesquicentennial Commission. The Big Top Chautauqua's cast and crew toured much of the state of Minnesota, producing the show at a variety of venues, including a 12-day stint at the Minnesota State Fair, where the cast did 48 50-minute sets in 12 days, at the end of which BCO singer Cheryl Leah declared... And I quote, Today I am a man. The story is an original musical and basically takes you on a historical hike through the old ways of the Gopher State. It's an opportunity to travel back down the river of time with Warren Nelson and the Blue Canvas Orchestra to see and hear what Minnesota was all about in its early history. Before we get to the show, a thank you as always to you the viewers, the people who take time to tune in. This is how we tune in these days. You just, you know, spin that radio dial and maybe that television dial. Now you just click us up. But we're so glad you're here. We're so grateful for the support. And as as I say every week, when I say we, I'm not just talking about the people that you see on, on the screen. I'm talking about all the folks doing the hard work behind the scenes, setting the shows up, getting the information together. Um, in regular times, all the volunteers who pitch in, and, and we have volunteers pitching in right now as well. Until we can sell tickets to the real deal, this here is the deal. And so we know that so many of you have reached out to support Lake Superior Big Top Chautauqua and Tiny Tent Show. We acknowledge that. We're grateful for that. Um, we will name our sponsors at the end of the show, as we always do. We acknowledge all of that, and we also know that folks have been digging deep for a variety of reasons and necessities uh, over the past year. But if you're able to uh, dig in and, and make a donation, there is a virtual tip jar up on screen right now. And you can also contact Lake Superior Big Top Chautauqua offices and set up a donation through more formal channels. Um, also come back in a little bit to talk to you about an event called Giving Tuesday. But for now, we're just happy to be here. We're happy you're here with us. Um, and I've got my special cap on to commemorate this special week. And now, off we go with Warren Nelson and the Blue Canvas Orchestra in 2008, taking us to visit our neighbors over there in Minnesota. Take it away, folks. Old Minnesota Song of the North Star is a co-production of Lake Superior Big Top Chautauqua, Minnesota Shows of Fairmont, and TPT's Minnesota Channel. Support for this program has been provided by the Rosen Family Foundation, the Mary H. Rice Foundation, the Catherine B. Anderson Fund of the St. Paul Foundation, Elizabeth Genzel, and General Mills Foundation. Support for the creation and touring of the Old Minnesota Show is provided by American Family Insurance and Ag Star Financial. All things Minnesota, all sounds, all sights, all stories. From the glacier scraped good southern state dirt up to the northern boundary waters, Rainy River Lake of the Woods, from the Blue River Line borders east to the Dakota edges west. All stones, all waters, all flora, all fauna, all waters again, and again all waters again, through the thick and brown and blue of it all. Nobody ever been thirsty up around here. <laughs> I was born bread and buttered here. If you weren't, well, you're here now. We're coming into that great sesquicentennial year. 2008, the 150th year that Minnesota celebrates. 
its place on the flag. When I first left old Buckeye, location 425. I heard of a distant country, a language most of A land of milk and honey and water of the best. They were too narrow and winding close to ground. I stepped up to my tavern and rode upon my chest. I'm found for me and soda, the lily of the west. The gopher girls are cunning, the gopher girls are shy. I'll marry me a gopher girl or a bachelor. As president of the Minnesota chapter of the Intergalactic Society for the Preservation of Footpaths, <laughs> I ask you to remember the old Minnesota trails, the centuries trodden old Indian trails that many of today's Minnesota roads roll over. The early European explorers found these trails and followed. One major trail ran between Spirit Lake and the Falls of St. Anthony from sacred place to sacred place. The old Dubuque Trail, then Immigrant Road, now Highway 52 through Rochester to the cities. The old territorial and military roads widen their way over this history, not to forget the War Road Trail, where war parties of the Dakota and Ojibwe traveled, east to west, right through where War Road, Minnesota, now shores on the Lake of the Woods. The story of all who came to and through old Minnesota is a traveler's tale. Now in modern times, you can just up and drive away on a beautiful Minnesota road. <laughs> <laughs> or fly away daily to the far ends of the world from the beautiful Minneapolis-St. Paul International Airport. <laughs> How am I going to get from here to there? How am I going to get there? How am I going to get there? I don't care as long as I'm riding with you. On the road to old Minnesota, up the ways down the days gone by. I know when I be going by the old road, I keep the window open deep in my eye. How am I going to get from here to there? How am I going to get there? How am I going to get there? I don't care as long as I'm riding with you. On the road to old Minnesota, bound tonight for years long back. Put the steamboats back on the rivers, put the trains back on the tracks. Let the horses have their rain again, put the horseless carriage in the Back 
to an era when trains of these Red River carts carved and built olive wood. Not a nail or piece of iron in them. Hauled furs beginning in the 1820s. Down to Mendota, across from Fort Snelling. And then to St. Paul and other port towns. Unloaded and auctioned or sold, the furs were then floated by steamboats to St. Louis and the world. Each cart waggles its own individual waggle, graceless and shaky on uneven ground. Break a wheel? Oh, make a new one out of that old oak tree over there. River to cross? Take the wheels off. Make a boat out of a stitched waterproof buffalo hide. On the old Red River Trail, pampered it to New St. Paul. All raw skins and buffalo hides, 468 miles in all. Sometimes you could hear the prairie squeal. Quick throw out a buffalo hide to hide from the night of the rain. We'll lay around loose in St. Paul to the back to go back again. Overland, four and a half, Rockaway, out the territorial road, dog sled, ice boat, their way, sleigh, want to see them over the snow, in the spring, race the waters, come the steamboats to St. Paul, Monona, Reeds Landing, and we, Hastings, Minnesota, welcome to one and all, how am I going to get from here to there, how am I going to get there? Tour of the Upper Mississippi on the Grand Excursion. In 1854, the whole of the United States celebrated the first rail connection between the Atlantic Ocean and the Mississippi River by a steamboat trip from Rock Island to the Falls of St. Anthony. And that Grand Excursion, being 150 years old back in 2004, was celebrated all along the Upper Mississippi, south of St. Paul, down towards Winona. Were you there? The steamboat carried its own demise to St. Paul in September 1861. The first locomotive ever seen in Minnesota, the William Crooks, was hauled up on the steamer Alhambra. By 1870, the famous steamboat traffics on the Mississippi, Minnesota, and St. Croix were over. The age of the Iron Horse arrived itself, now, somehow, somehow, gone. How am I going to get from here to there? How am I gonna get there? Ooh. How am I gonna get there? I don't care as long as I'm riding with you. On the shock of 1868 on the Minnesota Valley Road. First train through Twin Cities, 1867 to Chicago. Sing so quick away How am I gonna get from here How am I gonna get there Ooh. How am I gonna get there I don't care As long as I'm riding with you Minnesota The mother of the father of waters Rain Towns like new sons and daughters. Yo!
chance in your time is streaming by. Come, Come to, to the, the river. Oh, to now, upstream to down. The river drops where the currents fall. to the river come to the To the first people, all the great spirits called here. Where the city Minneapolis now stands so tall. The only falls in all the Mississippi fall here. on the Mississippi rolling in the door going with the flow milling what they sow out on the prairie hard spring wheat folk cash they grew back when old Minnesota was new wagon to the elevator grain by the train to the queen mill city of the west the west, oh, west. west. queen mill city of the world let the rolling mills roll what a grind what a find when they found how to purify the middlings when they turned that wheat around, no more brown speckled bran. Bread is the soul of man. Heaven is a leather that wants it right. Bag the flour, ship it pure and wide. And many apples on the Mississippi rolling in the dough. Rolling with the flow. Mellow what they sow out on the prairie. Hard spring wheat folk cash they grew. Back when old Minnesota would new wagon to the elevator, grain by the train to the Queen Mill City of the West. The West. West, Queen Mill City of the World, 
From 1880 to 1930, Minneapolis was the flower building capital of the world. The city got rich rolling in the dough, especially after the new roller mill technology was stolen from Hungary and set to roll in Minnesota. Gone now are the millstones older than Egypt. These are the Hill Brothers in 1858 in a famous Minnesota picture, dressing a millstone. Now it's not surprising that the best flour was being milled in Hungary. For bread is the soul of man, and every man is hungry to break good bread. <laughs> <laughs> now they called it hard spring wheat because it was hard. And it was hard to grind into a pure white flour. It was hardy and grew well in the north, but hardly the pure flour that was being milled by the winter wheat in St. Louis. When the Middlings purifiers arrived and the rollers went to steal, the center of flour milling sifted. <laughs> Did I say sifted? <laughs> Shifted to the falls of St. Anthony. In 1884, the Minneapolis millers surpassed Budapest in production. Of the 50 big years, 1915 to 1916, peaked at 20,443,000 barrels. We must, at the beginning, Minnesota remember the two giants. Charles A. Pillsbury of the Charles A. Pillsbury and Company, Pillsbury's Best. And Cadwallader C. Washburn of the Washburn Crosby Company, now General Mills Gold Metal Flower. Both of their A mills still stand. Pillsbury on the St. Anthony side, the Washburn A mill is now the highly celebrated, just opened Mill City Museum. I say to hey with this new fangled low carb diet, he is passed out over the bread and butter. <laughs> and he happens on the Mississippi rolling in the dough, rolling with the flow, milling with the soap out on the prairie. Hard spring wheat forecast they grew back when old Minnesota was new. Wagon to the elevator, grain by the train to the Queen Mill City of the West. The West? The West. Queen Mill City of the World. Keep your hands on the land. Lay your hands on the land. Prayer from the prairie all the year go round. Heaven on this farm. sun to come out or if there is it ain't flood or if there is it ain't drought and if by grace we don't get hail or hit by the rope of the tornado's tail if the spring comes early summer stays till the end in the fall we'll harvest all the land we'll say Kitchen kerosene 
Butter to churn, cow pigs, chickens to feed. Oh, just to tend in the garden. Make hay while the sun shines with the feet for the star. We'll do dung for each horse, oxen and cow with the side hands break. What was no they like now? Come on, come and kill the reaper, then all the new machine. Neighbors, friends traded whatever anybody need. The outfit come today to the show. historical prayer, a prayer prayed in the Red River Valley days of King Week, a prayer from 1886 over the harvest that was bound for the Minneapolis mills, a prayer I found in a book. It was a good book. It wasn't the good book, but it was a good book. Diaries of Mary Dodge Woodward, a prayer printed in the Fargo Argus and therein given eternal printed life. The deacon speaks. O oh Lord, we thank thee that our crops have not yielded us loss. But we would earnestly pray for better prices for wheat. And we pray thee, O oh Lord, that thou wouldst protect us against false inspection of wheat. Oh. And we beseech thee, O oh Lord, to see that Brother Smith's men do not misinform us. We know the value of wheat, but we need your guidance, Lord, to tell us how much we should receive when we deliver. Only thou knowest what goes on in that elevator. Amen. But we do not. So we pray thee, Lord, inform us, and thy name shall have the glory forever and ever. Amen. Oh, amen. amen. Well, aren't you glad all the time they took pictures of this place over the fence long ago? Memory stares a face, the family on the farm, the team and the plow raising house, beef and barn. They're all gone now over the prairie, through the big woods, a Minnesota view of all that once was up and all that was new in the old faded photographs. The ancestors stand with their boots on the mortgage and their hands on the land. Keep your hands on the land. Lay your hands on the land. Prayer from the prairie all the year go around. Heaven on this farm comes up from the ground. Keep your hands Howdy, folks. Breaking in here for just a moment to mention that Giving Tuesday is happening this December 1st. Giving Tuesday was created in 2012 as a simple idea. It's a day that encourages people to do good. Over the past nine years, this idea has grown to take on global significance. It's a movement that inspires hundreds of millions of people to give, collaborate, and to celebrate generosity in general. 
Frankly, that description sounds just like our audience. We know that you've been generous, you've continued to be generous. We do not take that generosity for granted. We know that many of you have already dug deep. Um, having said that, if Giving Tuesday is something that you would like to join, um, please contact Lake Superior Big Top Chautauqua offices, or you can even just go online and discover the phenomenon of Giving Tuesday on your own. But we hope that you will consider Lake Superior Big Top Chautauqua and all of its extensions, including Tiny Tent Show, as part of your Giving Tuesday. Now back to Warren Nelson, the BCO, and the 2008 performance honoring our, our neighbors over there across the state line in Minnesota. Oh, say can you see By the leaving evening light How so proud be the Indian ride To his coming night And the plowman looking back His gun against the tree Oh say can you see How a nation lost its country Beside their home river At the ancient crossing place The Dakota put quill to the treaty Statehood will soon seal their fate And beside their home river at Mankato, they hung 38. Oh, say, can you see how a nation lost its country? Sometime when you're driving north through St. Peter, take a left off the highway across from the Treaty Site History Center. Take a right on Old Minnesota Avenue and drive till you have to walk. Near this place on July 23rd, 1851, the Sisseton and Wapaton bands of the Dakota sold 21 million acres of their land to the federal government for $1,665,000, about seven and a half cents an acre. The Dakota, hoping to ensure a future for their children, had little choice but to sign. Besides an annual payment, the treaty promised a reservation extending 10 miles each side of the Minnesota River above the Yellow Medicine River. The U.S. Senate eliminated the reservation before ratifying the treaty but President Millard Fillmore decided to let them live on the reservation until it was needed for white settlement. They were tricked. The signing a vicious trader's paper, gone was the money they were to be paid. The Dakota went to war in the Minnesota River Valley in August 1862. They were starving, and the Indian agent refused to open the warehouse doors until the goods arrived from Fort Snelling. The gold arrived at Fort Ridgely one day late. But the causes of the conflict were deep. We wanted them to be just like us, overnight. Bishop Henry Whipple, who ministered among them, wrote, The voice of this whole nation has declared the Indian Department the most corrupt in our government. It has been characterized by inefficiency and fraud. The nation, knowing this, has winked at it. We have lacked the moral courage to stand up in the fear of God and demand a reform. The one trusted agent was Lawrence Tolliver. But for the Treaty of 1857, the Sioux bands of the Dakota Nation would have been a peaceable and thriving people. But the wrongs perpetuated by white men under that treaty mainly caused the murder of many innocent people in 1862. The Crow and his Indians 
realized their fate in 1858 at Washington at the last treaty with the government. They were as children led to the slaughter. No man seemed to care for them, and they became desperate. The young men could no longer be controlled, their lands were sold, and the traders got the proceeds through the connivance of men called respectable citizens by evildoers. Contracts for the removal of Indians was among the number of stupendous frauds practiced on the government. The next time you're in New Ulm, go to the third floor of the Brown County Historical Museum. There's a wagon there in which three settlers were killed. And there in a glass case is Little Crow's flute. Oh, say can you see By the leaving evening light How so proudly the Indian rides Into his coming night And the plowman looking back Say, can you see? Can you see? Our nation lost its country. The Ojibwa say there was a white giant in the North Country hunting animals with boulders ripped from the earth. And his blood was red. And when the time came, he laid himself full out, face down on the ground, which in the dusting of time covered him. And it's Giant's Ridge, they call it today, along the lay of his remains. And his blood turned to red dust, and his bones to red stone. And so goes the story of Masabi, the giant. And digging him up, they built a nation out of the dust and the bones, which in iron go to rust in the rain, red again. And in steel have the feel of his strength as he stood and walked along the old wall of Minnesota before it was named.
the Iron Ranges. The Vermilion, found in the afterkick of a false gold rush. That goofy false gold rush did open the blush of a new country and found a road. The Cayuna, found 1904, named for Kyler Adams and his dog, Una, who stumbled on it. Last door here, 1984. The Masabi, the giant the beginning and not yet the end of iron mining in Minnesota. Of the first one billion long tons of iron ore come from the Minnesota floor, 900 million come from Masabi. The Masabi range is 110 miles long from Babbitt to Grand Rapids, three and a half miles wide and 535 feet deep in the Minnesota geological sleep. Local dreamers and schemers began the prospecting but when it was found in the ground to be easy, rich pickings of a national sound, the big bugs came to bite. It was a joke of the gods that looking deep into the tradition of iron finds, the prize lay right under their feet. Underfoot the soft door laid up to 70% high grade assay. Found, found, found right there on top of the ground. The Merritt brothers got the shaft when the man with the cash and rock in his name, Rockefeller, came. Swallow the little guys. He wants a Minnesota rock and roll. U.S. steel born of the ore, Minnesota ore exhausted by two world wars. From down, around, down, up in Minnesota. The giant Masabi awoke in a rush, blasted shovel, a hematite. The giant Masabi awoke in a fit, dig it out in the open pit, hipping. Storefront, get up with Duluth. From the railroad to the docks, from the elevator load and go. And the carry grain and the haul and ore down the water road, Lake Superior. Up comes coal and merchandise until the blue highway is paved with lights to the merchantmen down below Cleveland, Detroit, Buffalo. Over the blue, through the Sioux, to the water ends of this world. Schooners raise it in the sails. 
In the wood line, oldest times going by the blow. Then stack high with the lumber, steamers puffing, blowing black. Propellers, lumber, hookers, package freighters down and back. Come discovery, start the cargo these ports are famous for. To harbor shipped it first, then Duluth the iron ore. From the open pit, Misabi, up and down the iron range. To the steel furnace mills burning in the east. And the carry grain and the hauling ore down the water of Lake Superior. Up comes coal and merchandise to the blue highway. It's made with ice to the merchantmen. Down below Cleveland, Detroit, Buffalo. Over the blue, through the Sioux, to the water ends of this world. Come again. You can board and travel water held and do it all in style Embarking on the peerless or on the America up the shore Or on the whale back, Christopher Columbus for the world's fair J.J. Hills, northern steamship line stacks above the rest Steamer North, land and sister steamer North West on route to Lord Detroit calling us in parlor 23 we're fitted up in luxury and cuban mahogany last apply these waters are not so long in the blue ago the ss north and south american of the georgia bay line as late as 1967 you could wait your call and step aboard See America's fourth coast from the rail, come along. And so arriving and departing, they sailed their day away. But still, under the lift bridge today, you see the ships. Up and down bound, in and out of the old canal. In and out to the open lake by the waters of Duluth and, and the, the carrying grain and the hauling ore down the water road Lake Superior. Up comes coal and merchandise to the blue highway is paved with ice to the merchantmen down below Cleveland, Detroit, Buffalo. Over the blue, through the Sioux, to the water ends of this world. Come again. But the flower 
speaks for this short sweet hour we all have been given and the weeping sweeps the sorrow to keep it from tomorrow the band plays here comes the parades bouquets laid today fresh on the graves at the beautiful end of May decoration Here comes the parades, bouquets laid today, fresh on the graves at the beautiful end of May. Decoration day. Play. Here comes the parade. Bouquets laid today, fresh on the grave. At the beautiful land of May. Decoration Day. You got your Bob Dylan, you got your Garrison Keeter. Ah. What other entertainer in Minnesota's history had the first day of the state fair named after? What other entertainer could bring out 80,000 people in Philadelphia for a parade? What other entertainer could draw 100,000 people to the grandstand? The one and only Dan Patch.
Mrs. Soul, my Mrs. Let's go, everybody going to be there. For the see it all stroll in the grandstand show at the great Minnesota State Fair. Leave the tractor and the baler in the hayfield. Look today, don't you dare shine a bit. Well, that's on me tonight at the great Minnesota State Fair. Oh! Gonna steal a little kiss, cop a little feel, throw baseballs at the kitties on the wall, hit the milk bottles, gonna knock them over all, pitching darts or make all the balloons. I'm a lucky guy, I'm gonna win soon. Spend all my money, I don't care, I'm gonna win the big teddy bear at the fair for you. Papa says so, Mom says let's go, everybody gonna be there. For the sea and all stroll at the grandstand show at the great Minnesota State Fair. Leave the tractor and the bailer in the hayfield. Or today, don't you dare shine the big well lights on me tonight at the great Minnesota State Fair. Exhibits in the 4 a tall, all the bounty of the county, the floral greenery, the homemade bowls in the farm machinery. Let's go through the show barns again. See the big piggies in the little piggy pens, and the goofy looking witches in the little giddy hens, and the horses and the ponies are starting in the stall. Every little bulls are sleeping in the straw. Bob, Bob, Black Sheep, have you any ribbons? There's a blue one from the Minnesota State Fair. Pop says so, Mom says let's go, everybody gonna be there. For the sea goes stroll in the grandstand show at the great Minnesota State Fair. Leave the tractor and the bailer in the hayfield. Or today, don't you dare shine the big way lights on me tonight at the great Minnesota State Fair. And I'm on the loose. Give me another prana pop hot on the stick. Buying everything I can chew all lick. Candy up a root beer, cheese curd, nachos, anything deep fried. Shove it up by nose to cotton candy. Please make it quick. We're good and ready to get good and sick. Sweet corn, caramel corn, milkshakes, no cones. The midway is raging with teenage hormones. Papa says so, Mom says let's go. Everybody gonna be there. For the sea and all stroll in the grandstand show at the great Minnesota State Fair. Leave the tractor and the bailer in the hayfield. Work today, don't you dare. Shine the good well lights on me tonight at the great Minnesota State Fair. Papa says so, Mom says let's go. Everybody gonna be there. For the sea and all stroll in the grandstand show at the great Minnesota State Fair. Leave the tractor and the bailer in the hayfield. Work today, don't you dare. Shine the good well lights on me tonight at the great Minnesota State Fair. Oh! Papa says so, Mom says let's go. Everybody gonna be there. Minnesota Song of the North Star is a co-production of Lake Superior Big Top Chautauqua, Minnesota Shows of Fairmont, and TPT's Minnesota Channel. Support for this program has been provided by the Rosen Family Foundation, the Mary H. Rice Foundation, 
the Catherine B. Anderson Fund of the St. Paul Foundation, Elizabeth Genzel, and General Mills Foundation. Support for the creation and touring of the Old Minnesota Show is provided by American Family Insurance and Ag Star Financial. Well, folks, that's our Tiny Tent Show for tonight. A special howdy to our viewers and friends in Minnesota. We want to thank you for tuning in and officially, by name, thank our sponsors who brought you this show this week, Jim and Joy Perry, Fiorio Wealth Advisors, Van Holtzen Chevrolet Buick GMC, Hawkus Law, Ringenberg Financial Group, Anna Biermeyer and Roger Hansen in honor of Giving Tuesday, coming this December 1st. Again, if you can join these sponsors, we, we welcome your support. If you can become part of Giving Tuesday and include Lake Superior Big Top Chautauqua in that giving, we are very grateful. We miss you, but we will see you somewhere at the other end of this thing. In the meantime, we do not take for a second, we do not take for granted your time, your attention, and your support. So thank you, and now it is time not, not, not to say goodbye, but rather to do as folks who wear caps like the one I'm wearing do and just say, well, I suppose, forward. <laughs>